probably all heard that kind of corny song from, I think it was like the late 80s, Whitney Houston. She says, I believe that, I won't say it. I believe that children are our future. Teach them well, let them lead the way. Show them all the beauty they possess inside. Give them a sense of pride to make it easier. Well, we have one, if you ever ask the question, why YL, that kind of sums it up. And youth leadership, Toastmasters youth leadership, hidden gem of Toastmasters. And I have been participating in youth leadership for about seven years. I do it at least once or twice a year. And today, not only do I want to tell you why it's a great program to get involved in, but also really the nuts and bolts of how to. Because I did have a few people ask me after I presented on youth leadership last, last month, I think, uh, well, what about, how exactly do you do? And I want to cover some of that today. So if you do decide to take the plunge, you'll know where to start and sort of how to go on. All right. Now, the handout starts, that first page says, why, why, Well, why? Keeping in mind that, well, let me ask this. How many of you love children, like children, tolerate children? <laughs> how many of you were children? <laughs> okay. I think that's a good It's really important to get involved in children, with children's lives. If you have children, you're already committed. For those of you like me who don't have children, have to find another way. But even if you do, think about it. Those little people of today, when you get to be 70, 80, 90, those are the people who are going to decide whether you have health care, Social Security, or will it be like the Eskimos did a couple hundred years ago, put you on an ice floe and shove you out to sea. That was the old age plan. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so we want to make sure that they're educated, eloquent, and are able to think logically and clearly on all kinds of issues. So that's sort of the broad picture of why people should get involved in youth leadership training. On the personal level, if you go to, I think it's the second to the last page of that handout, you'll see a chart for Toastmasters, leadership and educational track. And down, I think it's in the lower left-hand corner, it says advanced communicator gold. And you'll see that it's one of the requirements. You have to conduct some sort of seminar. And youth leadership is one of your three choices. I vote for youth leadership, which is why I'm talking to you today. So if you want to know what's in it for me, you're immediately able to tick off one of your goals or one of your objectives if you're going to be moving toward ETM. Okay. So that's kind of the why. But really important, how to. You've got this burning desire to work with kids. How do you do it? How do you get started? Well, there are really a couple of ways. You have to decide where you want to continue. I hold youth leadership because there are two ways to do it. Just like we have corporate clubs, which are usually restricted to employees, and then you have your community club, where anyone can show up and join. If you consider uh, youth leadership in a school, a public school, that's your community club, that's your closed club. The members have to be students at that particular school. That's a requirement to be part of it. And to get one of those started can be very difficult and very complicated. We don't have very many, I only know one. And that's at Dunn High School in San Jose. You met Bill Copeland at the last meeting. And he works at this high school. This is his third year going in. And he talked a little bit about how difficult it was to get started because first of all, you have to find out who's the decision maker. Who's the person that can authorize you being on campus, of you being um, a teacher for their students. And so there's a lot involved. I've never done it, but I do know it's a complicated process. And it may not always work. But on the other hand, schools are desperate because here you're offering them free help, right? They don't have to pay you, you're a volunteer. So you have that on your side. The other thing about meeting in schools is that you have to have a teacher or a counselor present at every meeting. And the you have to you sign in, because you have to, have to know who's on campus, right? Sign in, sign out. So it's kind of a little bit restricted there, but still very important. Schools are desperate for help, and that's one way that we can offer it. The other thing about the school is that it needs to be sponsored by a club. In fact, the best way to run a leadership is to get the buy-in 
from all of your club members. That's the way Toastmasters intends for it to be run. I don't do that, but I'm a rebel and I'll never, never be any good. <laughs> but get your club to buy it because then you have several people to share the curtain. Because it gets, it, it's work. It is work running on your leadership. And if you're doing it all by yourself, it's, it can get very hard, very tiring, very quickly. So if you have a club sponsoring it, that means the club is responsible for getting the materials. And also, you have many people, many voices speaking to the children or to the kids and not just one. So when you give education, that's what you'll do throughout the course, gestures and, and vocal variety, all the same things that we do, then you have different people present it and they get a different point of view, see different styles, keeps it more interesting for them. Now on the other side, you have your community clubs, your open, uh, open youth leaderships, YLs. Those are usually contact from a parent who has a child that they're interested in learning about public speaking. And usually they will call Toastmasters because Toastmasters gets calls on a regular basis. Parents say, well, do you have anything for kids? You know, I don't want to get involved, but I want to make my kid go. But we don't usually have anything. Youth leadership is under the auspices of the Lieutenant Governor of Marketing, which I always thought was odd, but Rita tells me, who's our current Lieutenant Governor of Marketing, that it's a great membership tool because not only do you help the kids, but as their parents get involved, you can offer to semester to them too. So in that sense, it makes sense. But they contact TLI, TI, and they ask if we have something. No, most of the time the answer is no. But I do occasionally get emails forwarded to me from people who have parents who have kids who want to get them. And if I can, I can accommodate them. If not, I tell them, oh, sorry. I can't help you, which is sad to turn them away. Um, the thing about the open club, it's an advantage for me since I tend to usually work alone, is that if you have a committed parent who's willing to do the work, there are some things that they're required to do. And I think if you look on the YYL sheet, the first one, going down to the middle, parent coordinator. That's the parent who contacts you and wants their child and their child's friends, fellow students, to get involved in what youth leadership. And this is what they have to do, for me anyway. They, they're responsible for finding the location. Then we agree on a time and a date, start date and date, time. We usually meet in the evening. In the manual, it tells you that classes are one to two hours. I can tell you two hours is too much. And one hour, Sometimes it can be a rush, just depending on how many students you have. My classes are 16. That's a manageable number. That's about as much as you can manage. We meet every other week now, but you can meet every week. Found every week we really put some pressure on the kids and me. So every other week, even though it stretches out the time, because it's eight sessions, it's still a much more relaxed pace, and everybody feels better for that. Hey, um. They collect the fees. If your club is not sponsoring it, someone has to pay. So buying manuals for 16 kids can get kind of expensive. So with my group, it's $30, $30, which covers the manuals. I give them, just to tell you, supplies, binder, manual, and I use the same manual that we use for the basic CC, the adult. There is a youth leadership manual which has been revised. Here it is. You want to take a look at it afterwards. I have the old one, which is garbage. It looks like they've improved it quite a bit since then. Since then, this one looks actually looks pretty decent. In my group, we do three speeches from that manual. I'll get to that for the supplies. So we have a binder, note paper, three by five cards. Uh, so what else? Printed materials, various things like education, public speaking, whatever I come across that I think would be interesting. And also timing cards and forms for the off counter grammarian and timer. Because they're kids, they need structure, and it's also a script for the Toastmasters. So when they're Toastmasters, they know exactly what to say and what exactly what you order. So that's what each kid gets in their binder. At the end of the year, there's the end of the year, the end of the course. 
They get a certificate and then a gift, which I'll talk about later. All right, also going back to the parent coordinator, they need to publicize the class. Now, one thing I've found is if the parent has contacted you, they probably already have a group of kids they have access to. So they're, my kids are mostly homeschooled. So there are tons of, I don't know if you know, there's like half a million homeschooled kids in California. They're very effective networks. So if you hook into something like that, you're never ready to supply students. So they usually have someone in mind, so it's just a matter of them contacting <coughs> their friends. They provide me the list, the contact information. I need contact for the parents. And if they allow their kids to have private personal email, then I get that too. Okay. And then they act as kind of liaison. If there's any big issues, the check bounces, something like that. That's the parent's job. Okay. All right. Now, as facilitator, this is what I do. I set the number of speeches at the beginning, three speeches. The organization of the meeting follows a Toastmasters meeting, have table topics, prepared speakers, evaluations, and we have an educational. Number seven, number six rather, remember that they are kids and you gotta keep it interesting. You gotta keep it, if you're getting bored, they'll show up really quickly. With a you know, you don't wanna have to be the big disciplinarian, though you wanna maintain discipline. So you keep it kind of interesting, keep moving. And the kids love it. And then, of course, keep track of attendance. Very important because remember, you only have eight weeks. And so my rule is they are allowed two absences. If they want to graduate, they can be absent two times. And they must complete three speeches. And once again, discipline right up front on the first day. Make sure they understand that we respect each other in this group. If we offer evaluation, they're kind, courteous respectful. We're not here to hurt anyone's feelings. We want to make sure that they're willing to come back and do it again. So that's very important. When one person has the floor, everyone else, no one else talks. Okay? That's really important because you're asking kids to sit for quite a while. Yeah, they kind of get a little antsy every now and then. And then finally, at the end of the, at the, end of the term, we have a graduation ceremony where they, I call up their name, they walk across, shake their hand. And then whatever little gift I have for a souvenir. One year it was little marble, big marble um, paperweights that Toastmasters used to have on their on their store. And then I had I had the uh, little thing which called it engraved with uh, later YL 2000 whatever the year was. So it's always something like that, something different, whatever I can find to make it kind of memorable. Okay. Now going to the actual meeting itself, the kids run the meeting. When we have the first meeting, that's information. I do all the talking, because that's where we talk about how the meeting's set up, the attendance, what the structure will be like. I explain their kids, the manual, how it works, all those things for the kids so that they understand how we're gonna proceed going forward. I take care of the scheduling, all the scheduling, but that gets to be a challenge because if I don't know the kids, then I don't know who's going to be a good Toastmaster or who will be a good one for table topics because these are kids. Now, legally, the age is 13 to 18, so it shouldn't be such a hard choice. But I don't check ages, so I have kids that are 9 and 10 in my group. Smart kids. They can handle it. Um, if you have kids that are coming back, say you've done it, as so I have, for six or seven years, following kind of the same group of people, if they are returning students, those are automatically my Toastmasters. And probably my first couple weeks of Table Topics Masters. And then after the kids have seen the meeting for a couple of weeks, then I look around and I ask, would you like to be a Table Topics Master? Now that you've seen what it looks like going forward, would you like to volunteer? If I still have openings for Toastmaster, who looks like they'd be a good candidate. Those ones I tend to pick because it's a big responsibility for whoever does, even in our, our adult groups. And then I make the final schedule. So I have a preliminary schedule, then I have a final schedule for the class or the end of the term. It has to be juggled because people, you know, get sick, 
have homework because kids have so much homework. Oh. Anyway, so they can't make it. So that throws things off and then you're constantly, okay, I've got to reach out to the schedule. And if you look on the second and third page, there's actually my roster, which is just assembly spreadsheet, Excel spreadsheet. I'm not super high tech. And then on the second page is actually an example of the schedule that I used. And the blackout spots show when the kids are absent. Okay, so the way it works is that you'll notice that basically the kids speak one week, evaluate the next. Speak, evaluate, speak, evaluate. And that way it's sort of evened out. If they are Toastmaster or Table Topics Master, then they don't speak. Obviously, they don't speak. They don't evaluate you. They just do the one thing. Depending on how many kids are present, I may have to double up for timers. It's just exactly the way we do in our meetings, right? If only eight people show up, then you got to scramble. So we do do that. So my group meets for 90 minutes, so they have a five to seven minute break which each one of the different families responsible for snacks. If you have a long enough meeting, that's another way to break it up. So the kids have a little bit of, of rest in between. The speeches are three to five minutes. So they can talk on any subject. Once again, I'm using the adult manual and they can do any project they want except project number seven. And if they're a returning student, they don't have to do the icebreaker again. And the reason why I don't let them do number seven this is because that's research topic, and that's the one they all pick. Research is easy for them. I mean, I try to get them not to use a card, so here's your three by five cards, so they might have ten of these. Or maybe they'll have one or two, but the sprint is smaller than this. Because they jam every word of their speech on their card. And I just said, well, God bless them. That's, that's, if that's what they need to do to get up front and do their presentation, that's okay. That's okay. The goal is to do without notes, but I'll take what I can get. So they do three to five minutes, then they're evaluated by another student. For the first meeting, sometimes the first two meetings, depending on how many experienced students I have, I will do at least two evaluations. So I do the very first speech and then maybe one other. And I do that because obviously I want to give them an example of how to evaluate since we're not born knowing that stuff. The table topics, which is really kind of their favorite part, especially the high school kids because they want to talk about Afghanistan and Iraq and that sort of thing. But the younger kids are more like, if you were a dog, what kind of dog would you be? <laughs> when you got nine, 10, 11 year olds, <laughs> I've learned more about animals in the last couple of years than I ever wanted to know. So those are the kind of, but I, it doesn't really matter what the question is, right? What matters is whether you can form an uh, adequate response to the question, whatever it may be. So table topics are one to one and a half minutes. Once again, a short version. Evaluations, one to two minutes. Evaluations are probably, probably the second biggest challenge I have because they're having to talk about their fear and nobody wants to seem critical of anyone but then on the other hand they're also kids and kids tend to be very honest and not always the most tactful <laughs> people on the planet so somehow we, we have to strike a little bit of a balance so I usually have to go through how we evaluate a couple of times during the term just to remind people kind generous compassion so, and, and keep it simple. So we don't want 12 reasons of why, you know. Just keep it simple. Keep it simple, keep it plain, and keep it kind. Most important thing. Let's see. I'll counter for Marion also. A couple of things I do to kind of mix it up for the kids. They really like the idea of a person who does the I on thing. One of the parents gave me one of those little bells you know, like a little tap, like on a hotel counter, you tap. So we'll use that. And they love that. You can see the little fingers twitching, <laughs> waiting for that ah, uh, um, so, and uh, ding, ding, ding. They like that. I'm going to do it for table topics, of course. And then the other thing is the timers. If I can get a timing light, oh, it's a fight for whose, toast, whose timer that day. But other than that, we use just timing cards. 
And I told them once that when you're timing, if the person doesn't look at you, hold up the card until you're sure that they see you. And I had one young lady who was the timer. <laughs> and so this was the table she's sitting at, because they sit in the U shape. And when the green card came up, if they didn't look at her, she was like this. <laughs> Yeah, they saw her that day. <laughs> so yeah, so they get, they get really into it, into the whole process. And they are really adorable. Once again, the, and I mentioned, let's see, how the meetings run, just like ours. Graduation, hopefully we kept pretty close to the schedule. So that's something of a free night. So that's when we have our party, our graduation party. We have all the families bring snacks. And they're really big on health food, so not on greasy chips and things. And once again, I, I create the certificate, and you can actually get them if you order the youth leadership kit. It comes with it's five manuals and a leadership guide, and it also has Toastmasters certificates that come with it. So it would just be a matter of filling in the name. If you're not using Toastmaster equipment, or you're not sponsored rather by Toastmasters Club, then create your own. That's what I do. And I don't put Toastmasters on anything. So it's just youth leadership, which I think, as far as I know, there shouldn't be a problem with using that phrase or that title. And that's what I do. So we have the graduation ceremony, we have a party, and then we hopefully, hopefully welcome, I mean, hopefully make them promise that they will continue to practice their public speaking. Take a promise. Now, how many of you are going to volunteer every chance you get? church, school, wherever, if they need someone to speak, will you do it? Most of the time, someone will work. And then, now remember, you made a promise, I'm looking at you, I'm going to ask you, if you come back next year, I'm going to ask you, you kept your promise. Think about it. And a few more might raise their hand. <laughs> so they don't come down, but hey, I, what can I tell you? I take people at their word, so we hope they, they will continue. But having a good time, making sure that they understand the program, that they honor the commitment of the two absences and completing the three speeches, then the graduation, and we're kind of done. And really, that's, that's how youth leadership works. It's a pretty straightforward plan once you get it going. I mean, getting it started is probably the most difficult thing. But once everything's in place, it's just like any other Toastmasters meeting, except that the people are usually like, when some of them are like this tall, but they're smaller. <laughs> a lot smaller than a lot of here. So, any questions? Yeah, that was great, Sharon. I, I got a good visual of what you are doing with this. Uh, some logistical stuff. Yeah, is this after school program or is this during school? I did one at high school and it was during the lunch hour. But the kids only had like 40 minutes, and that meant racing from work to get to the school, signing in, getting in, barely sitting down, and I think it was one speech, and then mostly table topics because you want everyone to speak. Uh, that I would not recommend unless they have a full hour. Other than that, Bill's meet from 2.30 to 3.30, so they have an hour of it's after school. And th this one was? That one was 90 minutes, and we meet usually from 6.30 to 8, or 7 to 8.30, once every other week. But it's what you agree on with the, and what the parents are willing to. This one is one. Can, um, can you partner with a nonprofit that um, works with you, or does it have to be a parent that's part of it? No, no, absolutely not. You could do it in Girl Scouts. You do it for churches, um, PTA, school, any, you can do it for anyone, anyone at all, if they're willing to, in that case, provide a place, because whatever, whatever you do, they need to provide a place, and then you agree on a time, then figure out how you're going to supply the kids with materials, so pick up a tab on that if they are, that's good, if not, then you probably will want to find a club, if you would like to sponsor the group on an ongoing basis because if you hook up with an organization, you probably wouldn't want it to be a one-time thing. If it's successful, you probably want to do it at least once a year. So you would need some sort of club or some, you'd need a club or a really rich sponsor to continue to support. 
So since you've been doing it for so many years now, how often do you see these students coming back? Uh, I have kids in my class who've been in it for three years. So most of them, I'd say probably 80% of the people in my class come back at least for two years. So it's really good. This we know I did okay. <laughs> In that case, thank you for your time and attention. I appreciate any feedback you have, because I did it yesterday. I thought it was a little rough. But I need to do it three more times <laughs> for the next three Saturdays, because if you haven't been to a TMI, definitely want to go. They're worth it. And thank you, Gwani. See you next